Hi there and welcome. Well there's been some really good news this week from the marina. In line with the CRT recommendations the marina have now adjusted their lockdown guidelines. So at long last leisure boaters are able to go to the boats and take them out. There are of course uh, some restrictions on that. First of all, you have to let the marina know that you go in so they can keep an eye on numbers. You've got to do the whole social distancing thing. Um, you can only go with members of your own household and that has to be limited so that it, the pontoons don't become overcrowded or anything like that. And you can take the boats out but only between the hours of 9 and 5 o'clock due to the restrictions of people being able to stay overnight elsewhere other than their own um, residence. I also got a, um, an update from the CRT to say that they are trying to get the government to look at that and uh, try and to persuade them that uh, it would be a good thing to be able to let leisure boaters and people who hire boats to be able to stay out overnight on the canals where I would think it would be fairly isolated and uh, reasonably safe. So that's uh, good news and hopefully it won't be too long before those uh, overnight restrictions are lifted and it could apply to boats and hopefully to people who go caravanning and that kind of thing as well, camping maybe. And so yesterday I went to the boat and I spent the whole day there cleaning it and kitting it out with clothing and putting some of the food back that I had taken off the boat and getting it generally ready. So hopefully on next week I'm going to take the boat out for a short cruise and then as soon as the restrictions on the overnight uh, staying out are lifted I have a long six day cruise already planned. So in this uh, vlog I want to show you some of the things that I've been doing in preparation for that during this lockdown period and I'll share with you some of the planning tools that I, that I generally use and you may find, find that uh, helpful if you're new to boating and uh, want to plan some trips out. And I've tried to make them particularly pertinent to people on cabin cruisers or people that have a boat that runs off petrol rather than diesel because that throws up quite a few different issues. So please enjoy.
So today is really all about preparing the boat, ready for it to go out at some point next week. And I thought I'd try and be a little bit organised with the uh, shopping um, this time round. And I've produced myself a lovely tick sheet and list of all the things that I'm going to be putting back in the cupboards that I took out before the lockdown. I want to make sure that there's plenty of tinned food that's uh, kept on the boat just in case there we get a problem and we get stuck somewhere where there's no shops or anything like that so I know it's not always that pleasant but it, it does as a, as a standby so I'm going to make sure that the cupboards are fairly full up ready for our next adventures All this stuff uh, represents my uh, field of Anathoth. I don't know if you know the story of the prophet Jeremiah in the Old Testament in the Bible. Jeremiah was known as the gloomy prophet and in Jeremiah chapter 37 verse 5 we find the people of the time fearful for their future. During this time however Jeremiah bought a field in Anathoth a small village near to Jerusalem. This was a sign that the time would eventually come when the people would return from exile and pick up where they left off. On the afternoon of the 23rd of March something told me to go over to the boat and take off all the food items that had been stored ready for a cruise. On leaving the boat I had an emotional word with her, closed the curtains and said that it might be some time before I could return but return I would, and the food was shared out. So ever the optimist, on the 20th of April, I took delivery of a full box of replacement food ready for the return, and today I'm putting that food away. We all live in patient hope. The most major thing that I wanted to sort out during lockdown was to secure a new home mooring for the Swamp Duck. Since I bought the boat in 2018 it's been moored at Shardlow Marina and that's been great because I've been able to explore the River Trent from there up to Newark, the River Soar down to Loughborough and onto the Leicester branch of the Grand Union Canal. I've explored the Erewash Canal a couple of times up to Langley Mill and I've been up on the Trenton Mersey Canal up to Fradley and part way down the Coventry Canal so it has been a good base from that point of view but the problem has been that because Shardlow Marina is off the River Trent it is prone to flood. As soon as we have a few days rain the river levels rise and it makes it impossible to use the lock, either Derwent lock number one on the Trenton Mersey or the Sawley locks. So those of you who have been following my vlogs for a long time will know that the last time I was able to take the Swamp Duck out was in October 2019. So with that in mind I set about trying to find another home mooring for the Swamp Duck so that would avoid some of the issues that I've discovered at the Shardlow Marina and it would also give me the opportunity to explore another part of the network as a leisure cruiser. I had a, a couple of failed attempts at uh, securing a mooring 
um, one of them uh, I was almost at the point of signing up for it fortunately it didn't happen and I'm glad it didn't because it would have ended up me moving the boat or attempting to move the boat during the lockdown so it just wouldn't have happened and it could have been quite an awkward thing to do in the end I managed to buy a canal side mooring with the River and Canal Trust. On the Canal and River Trust have a whole section um, on moorings so that they are either you either bid for them or you pay the, the, the full price for them and uh, fortunately I found a, a mooring which was just the right size and it would appeal to somebody with a, a, a cruiser or a very very small um, narrow boat but on the whole, I don't think it would uh, have been um, of much use to, to narrow boaters. And so I took ownership of it on the 1st of June, which does mean that for a little while it's going to, to remain empty and I'm still going to have to be paying my fees at Shardlow Marina. That's inevitable at the moment. There's going to be a crossover uh, period. Um, and with everything else that's, that's going on, it, it's just just one of those things really. I did toy with the idea of uh, getting the boat out of the water and trailered down to the new mooring and the cost wasn't prohibitive but I just couldn't uh, manage to get that done during the lockdown period. So I'm going to have to wait to let's see when the uh, restrictions are lifted on staying overnight on a boat. So I've been able to visit the new mooring a couple of times and I'm now in the process of getting it ready and preparing it for the arrival of the Swamp Duck whenever that will be and hopefully it will be in the very near future. So it will take me five to six days to get the boat to its new mooring. So that leads on nicely to how I plan my trips out when we're over a few days. So I want to share with you some of the, the tools that I have used. The first thing I start off with is my Inland Waterways uh, map of Great Britain. For people that are not on narrow boats, do need to go into a fair bit of detail because there are things on here places on here that as a non narrow boater you can't go for example the Standage Tunnel on the uh, Huddersfield Narrow so this is a good starting point for planning so the next place I would go to for planning is uh, the, the guidebooks there are two sets I've got here one is the uh, Nicholson's guidebooks. These are quite good and the maps on here tend to be the Ordnance Survey type of map. And then the other ones are the Pearson's ones. Now the maps in here I think are, are slightly more useful because they've got things on like the moorings, the visitors moorings, private moorings and they go into a lot more 
detail. The problems with these guides is the fact that they you, you obviously need quite a few and they do run to be expensive so by the time I bought a map and four guidebooks here I've spent the best part of £60 and then the other problem you've got is the fact that these seem to very quickly go out of date so the best thing I can point to is I follow quite a few of the YouTube boaters channels and I do that in conjunction with, with one of these. So I'll sit and watch a vlog of somebody's journey in a place that I'm interested in going. And I'll watch it with the map open and follow it on the map. So when they point something out like a water point that is no longer there, I can annotate the map and strike it off. Or if they point out something useful like there's an Aldi just close by, it's not mentioned on here, and I can again add that so I find those quite useful I do watch quite a few because it gives me a fair coverage of the areas that I'm likely to to go to so the main ones that uh, I f follow and there's a couple that I do actually support so there's Phil on the narrowboat journeys now he's probably forgotten more than most people know about the canals and the rivers of uh, Great Britain because he's been doing it for many many years and has done it as a single-handed boater which is useful because he understands some of the problems when you're doing this on your own. There's Joe and Michael on the minimalist and they're always good for pointing out where the Aldi is. Um, then there is people like Kath and Anna Marie on the narrowboat experience and Sean and Colin on foxes afloat they're pretty good for pointing out places of interest that are close by the canal which may not necessarily be pointed out in these guidebooks and then there's Fran and Richard on floating our boat and they tend to include lots of walks on their uh, their journeys which again you might find of uh, interest and of use and there are lots of others that I look at to try and keep these these books up to date uh, there's uh, Mark and Debbie on the well deck diaries and Matt and Ali on boating beyond the one thing that these all have in common is the fact that they are narrow boaters and no disrespect to them at, at all but the one thing that I'm interested in as a cabin cruiser is I want to know where the petrol stations are and if you're stuck on a canal and you're running short of petrol you need to know where you can go and how far away it is and maybe even a contact telephone number or a postcode so in order to do that I've started to use Google, the Google Maps and I'll type in nearest petrol stations and it'll come up with these little symbols and then they will then be have the details at the side with the telephone number and directions and details and even the website so you get the postcode and I've started to take the details off there and annotate them these guidebooks with those sorts of details as a, a cabin cruiser rather than a narrowboater I also want to know about marinas and you won't find much information about the marinas on the YouTube channels because narrowboaters tend to stay away from the marinas because they can be a little bit more self-sufficient but I want to know where I can get some facilities like showers and maybe the odd shop um, more so than they do so again I've used the internet to um, work out where the marinas are they are they do tend to be mentioned in here but it's just by name and nothing else so you need to find out the details and again you may need to ring ahead to make sure that they've got space for you 
and you want to know about the, the costs and just exactly what you do when you get there because they're all different. Also using a cabin cruiser I'm probably going to need shops and supplies more often than other boaters and there are a couple of YouTube channels which I find useful for adding to these maps because they're always visiting farm shops and things like that that are a little bit off the way and won't necessarily appear on these national publications so if I look at Fran and Richard's uh, YouTube vlog I'll have my books out because they'll point out where there are things like farm, farm shops so that's on floating our boat and on our narrowboat quest Pat and Eileen are great ones for visiting farm shops so again I use at the book when I'm following their vlog just to annotate the map. There are a number of websites which will help you to plan your journeys on the canals and rivers. This one is called Canal Plan AC and I find this one to be probably the most useful. So using this tool I'm going to see how far I can go in the time that I've got for my one day visits at the moment. So I can select my starting point by name. So if I put in Shardlow Marina, that's my starting point. And I'm going to see how far I can travel from Shardlow Marina in a certain time choose the length of hours I'm going to put five hours and I've only got one day in which to do it so do you want to return to Shardlow Marina in this time yes that's important and I'm going to plan this without any dates so I can do it at any time if you put the dates in it may give you other information that it's clocked about stoppages and that kind of thing so there we are it's come up with four different possibilities a b c and d so a is on the trent b is on the trent and mersey C is on the River Saw and D is on the Erewash. Now I'm going to discount the Erewash because at this time of year, with it not being used very much lately, it's notorious for weeds. So I know that that route could be difficult. So I'm going to discount that so that leaves me with three. And the first one I'm going to do is the Trent and Mersey Canal because it's my first trip out for a while and I'm very familiar with this stretch so it just gives me a little bit of detail and it says this is on the Trenton Mersey and is 5.02 miles and three locks away a total journey time will take four hours and 38 minutes to do there and back so that, that's, that's okay and that gives me plenty of time for a lunch stop and filming and that kind of thing. But this is an excellent tool, the Canal Plan AC and I do recommend it and it goes into a lot of detail. So if you have that and supplement it with detail from Google as regards to petrol stations and information which is up to date from YouTubers then you're going to have a pretty good planning tool. I've already done this for when I'm going to take the boat to its new mooring and from all that information I've put it all on some laminated sheets, kept it to a minimum so I can take that on the boat and I've got it to hand and it gives me the petrol stations which I've highlighted and where they are and the overnight stop and I've got one one day on each page of the little document I've produced so that's my plan so that combined with the map I should have a really good idea of where I'm going and hopefully it'll all work out 
Thank you for watching and hopefully next time I will have a proper cabin cruising video for you. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell.